How's it going guys? In today's lesson we're going to be going over how we can create live face detection and it's going to look like this. As you can see it captures my face and it gives me the name tag of federico.png and it actually works with any face and you can do multiple face detection. So if Elon Musk is there for some reason you can also detect his face. It even gives you a percentage of how accurate it is and it works pretty well as you can see no matter where I move. I mean, if I turn a bit, it still recognizes my face, but eventually it might switch to unknown because it can't cover every angle, of course, but it's quite accurate. So that's what we're going to be covering in today's lesson. And let's just close this. And, and what we're going to do first is take care of the important parts. And that is adding some faces to our project and creating all the imports. So first of all, go to your main folder and create another directory which is going to be called faces. And inside here, you just want to insert some faces that you want to be recognized. So in my example, I have this face over here, which is me, and I have this face of Elon Musk. So let's go ahead and drag those into faces. And in your example, of course, I recommend adding your own face since it probably won't recognize my face in your room unless you're using a picture of me, of course. So take a picture of yourself and make sure that you can see your face because that's what we will be using. And that's going to take care of the faces folder. Then we can go back to main and we can start with the imports. So go ahead and open up your terminal. And the very first one we're going to install is pip install dlib. And we actually have to specify a certain version, which is going to be 19.22. I tried it with the other versions and it just didn't work on my computer. So I recommend using this version of Dlib. Then to read video, we need to go ahead and install OpenCV-Python. And finally, to make this all work, we're going to be using a package called face underscore recognition. And this is really going to simplify the whole process of facial recognition in our program. Now do make sure that the indexing is complete so that we'll actually have the packages appear here. But the first thing we want to import is face recognition and we will also import OS and system followed by importing CV2. And we're going to go ahead and import NumPy as NP. And we also want to import math. Now the very first thing we're going to do in this project is calculate the accuracy percentage of how accurate it is when we're recognizing a face. It might be 90% accurate, it might be 80% accurate, but we just want to have that displayed on the screen. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and type in face confidence. And that's going to take a face distance, which we will have later, and a face match threshold, which is going to be set initially to 0 0.6, which is 60%. Then we'll go ahead and create a range, which is going to be 1.0 minus face match threshold. And we need to create a linear value, which is going to equal 1.0 minus the face distance divided by the range times 2.0. And let's remove this U. And I just want to say immediately that it's not important that you understand this completely. There are so many ways to calculate the percentage for the accuracy regarding the faces but this is just one of those many ways to do it. So don't worry if you don't understand everything here. But the next thing we'll do is go ahead and create if face distance is more than the face match threshold, then we're going to go ahead and return the string of the rounded number, which is going to be the linear value times 100. And we want that to be rounded to two decimals. And we're going to add a percent sign at the end else we're going to go ahead and create a value, which is going to equal a linear value plus, and here we need to create some parentheses, and inside these parentheses, we'll create some more parentheses and add 1.0 minus the linear value times the math.power of the linear value minus 0 0.5 times two. And for the y, we're going to go ahead and add 0 0.2. And we want to multiply all of this by 100. Then we can go ahead and return the string of the rounded value of value, and that will be rounded to two decimal places, plus the percent sign. 
And I also want to mention that you can find all of the source code to this video in the description box down below. So feel more than free to grab that and copy whatever you want to copy in case you don't feel like writing it all. And it's also easy to follow along with the source code, of course. But I just want to let you know that that's an option. And right below that, we're going to go ahead and create a class called face recognition. And let's make some space because we need to insert a few variables such as the face locations, which will hold the locations and the face encodings, because we need to encode each face before we can actually touch it. Then we have the face names so we can recognize whose face it is. And we also have the known face encodings, which are the ones we're going to upload and the known face names which are the names that we supply, of course, which will be taken from the PNG images. And we also need to create a variable called process current frame. And this was just recommended from the documentation so that we don't try to recognize faces every single frame. And we save some computer power by only processing every other frame. Now we're going to create an initializer, so def init. And what we want to do inside here is create a function that initializes the encoded faces. So here we're just going to say encode faces. And right below that, we're going to go ahead and create that function. So def encode faces. And inside here, we're going to go ahead and write for image in OS list directory. And we want to grab the faces folder. And that's the one that we created right inside here. Now the face image is going to equal face recognition dot load image file and we want to load the formatted string of faces slash image and this actually has to be the actual image and then we have the face encoding because we need to encode each one of these images so the face encoding is going to equal face recognition dot face encodings and it's going to take the face image at the index of zero now we need to call self dot known face encodings and dot append and we will append the face encoding then self dot known face names and we will append the image because that will just be the image name and at the end of this just to make sure everything worked well we're going to go ahead and print the self dot known face names and now we can pass this into the initializer so we can just say self dot encode faces and the best thing to do now is to actually test out that this works to see we have no errors and to do that, we'll go ahead and create a main check. And inside here, first we need to instantiate the face recognition. So face recognition will equal face recognition. And then we can go ahead and actually we don't have to do anything because there's nothing that we can do. All we have to do is instantiate it so that it calls the initializer. And if we run this, we should see my name and Elon Musk as well inside the console. And perfect. So now it says that there are these two images that have been initialized and you can add as many people as you want inside your faces. That just adds to the fun of the facial recognition. For now, I'm just going to use these two images that I used previously. So that's the first part done. And I'm actually going to go ahead and take a little break. So I'll go ahead and pass you on to future me. All right, so I am back. And the first thing we're going to do now is create a function called run recognition and this is going to take care of actually running everything so the first thing we need to take care of is creating a video capture and this is going to be using OpenCV of course so CV2 and we're going to create a video capture and this is going to be at the index of zero. And it depends really on how many webcams you have hooked up to your computer, but in general, it should be set to zero if you do have a camera source for your first webcam, otherwise one for your second cam source and so on. And another thing I want to mention real quick is that you need to make sure that PyCharm or whatever code editor you have has access to your webcam or else it's not even going to run the program because of course it's a privacy concern for MacBook or for Windows if a program can just open the webcam. So you need to grant permission to the code editor. But in any case, let's go ahead and make a safety check. So if the video underscore capture dot is not opened, 
then we're going to go ahead and say system exit video source not found dot 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 for dramatic effect. Then we can go ahead and create a while true loop because if this is not the case, the program will continue and we can start recognizing some frames. So here we're going to have whether the frame was a success or not and the actual frame. So ret is going to return to us false if there's no frames to process. And this is going to be the video capture dot read. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we only want to process every second frame. And to do this, we're going to go ahead and call process current frame and check whether that is true or not. And of course, we're going to toggle this on and off each time we run this. And the first thing we want to do is resize the current frame to one fourth the size so we can save some computer resources. So here we'll go ahead and type in cv2.resize and we want to insert the frame at the coordinates of zero comma zero and we're going to provide the fx which is a way to resize to one fourth and the fy also to one fourth. Now face recognition uses a different kind of color formatting and when we use OpenCV it actually uses the blue green red format and what we want to use is the red green blue format so to do that we're going to go ahead and change it by typing in RGB small frame and that's going to equal the small frame and we're going to use some magic here so we're going to use everything there everything there and we're going to pass in two colons minus one and this is some incredible sugar syntax that's really difficult to read but all you need to know is that that changes it into rgb now we're going to go ahead and find all the faces in the current frame so let's go ahead and find all the faces and we're going to start with the face locations which is going to equal the face recognition dot face locations for the RGB small frame. Then we also have to encode these. So face encodings is going to equal face recognition dot face encodings. And we want to pass in the RGB small frame and the self dot face locations. Now let's actually go ahead and try to perform the image recognition. So first we're going to call self dot face names, which is going to equal an empty list. And we're going to type in for face encoding in self.face encodings, we're going to do the following. So first we want to check if there are any matches. So here we're going to type in face recognition dot compare faces. And we want to compare the self.known faces to the face encoding. So if there is a face inside the face encodings, we're going to have a match, which is good news. Otherwise we need to also go ahead and create some default values such as unknown, and as the confidence level, we'll also just say unknown. So these are faces that exist, but we don't have any information regarding who it is. Now, the next thing we need to do is go ahead and get some face distances. And that's going to equal the face recognition dot face distance. So these are actually very convenient methods. They're just so easy to use. Self dot known face encodings for the current face encoding. And we want to get the best underscore match underscore index. So the one that's closest is going to be the best match. And that's going to equal NP arg min, which is going to get the minimum of the list. And that's going to be taken from the face distances. Now, if it is the current match with the best match index, that means we're going to go ahead and add the label. The name is going to equal the self dot known face names at the index of best match index. And the confidence is going to equal the face confidence. And that's the function that we just created a little while back with the face distances at the index of best match index. Then we can go ahead and append to the face names, the name and the confidence. And this will take care of giving us labels. So now we have all of the information we need to actually annotate the pictures. So that's all that's left for us to do. But of course, we also need to do one more thing and that is change the self dot process current frame to the opposite of whatever it is. So self dot process current frame. So this is going to happen every frame so that we again, only process every other frame to save computer resources. So we're done with the hard part. Now all we have to do is of course create the annotations. So here we'll type in display annotations. And for the top 
right bottom and the left comma name in zip and we want to put these files together so self dot face locations and self dot face names so we want to put those together and then take from them now we still have to bring the image back to its original dimensions because right now it's one fourth the size and to do that we have to go ahead and type top times equals four and we need to do this for all of them right times equals four bottom times equals four and left times equals four and with that we now have the original dimensions now the rest is just using OpenCV to annotate. So CV2, and we're going to go ahead and call rectangle because inside rectangle, we need to pass in the frame. Then we need to pass in the left and the top followed by the right and the bottom. And we're also going to pick a color, which is just going to be red. So 00255 with a thickness of two. Now we also need to create another rectangle immediately under this one so that we can put the text on top of it. So we're just going to duplicate this and this time it's going to be left and bottom minus 35. And instead of having two, we're going to go ahead and just provide minus one, which means we're going to fill the square instead of giving it a thickness. Finally, we need to go ahead and provide the text. So CV2 put text and that's going to take a frame followed by a name. And we need to go ahead and provide the text. So left plus six pixels. And we also want to have bottom minus six pixels. It's going to have a CV2 font of font underscore Hershey duplex. And the font size will be set to 0.8 of its original size. And we want it to be white. So 255, 255, 255 with a thickness of one. And that almost went off the screen. That's a really long line. And all that's left to do is to get outside of this for loop and go ahead and type in cv2.image show. And we want to give it a name, face recognition, followed by the current frame. And we also want to have a way of exiting out of this program. So if cv2.wait key, and that's going to be one millisecond, is equal to the ASCII character of Q, then we want to quit. And we're just going to type in break. And one indent out of this, we can finally go ahead and call video capture dot release because we are done. And we can also go ahead and type in CV2 dot destroy all humans. And I'm just joking, it's destroy all windows. And that was literally the last line of code for that function. Now all we have to do is go ahead and call fr.run recognition. And if everything went well, we should be able to actually start recognizing our face. So, so far everything's good. And you might be wondering where is it? And the simple truth is it's right here, right in the background. So now we have my face being recognized. If we go ahead and add Elon to the equation, he will also be recognized. But let's try to add someone such as Obama, which we do not have any information for yet. Now, if we go ahead and open this picture and display it to the screen, it's going to say unknown because it doesn't know who it is, but it does recognize that it is a face. So that's the power of OpenCV and face recognition. This was one of the easiest ways to actually create it. And it's a really cool project to create on Python and to show off to your friends. But I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, don't forget to leave a comment and a like. It helps the channel a lot. But otherwise, with that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next lesson.